First, we have David Lewis, the acclaimed writer and director of this heartfelt film known for his ability to tell beautiful queer-centered stories. David's crafted a narrative full of charm, emotion, and just a little bit of magic, I think. Joining him are the incredible actors who broke bring this story to the screen. Matthew Montgomery is an industry veteran and indie film icon playing a lead role with his signature blend of vulnerability and strength. Cody Duke should be joining us soon. He's a fresh face on the scene. He brings youthful energy and a great depth to his character. And of course, we have Steve Callahan, an actor known for his layers of warmth and experience to any film he's been on. Together, these four men have created something truly special. And today, we're here to delve deeper into this journey. But first, take a look. Let's renew our wedding vows. This is so thoughtful. Thoughtful? First divorce is always the toughest. This could be the start of something new and exciting. I don't want something new and exciting, Mom. No one mentioned a roommate. Jeez. It was dark. Nothing to see. Thanks. No, I mean there was plenty to see. Just don't use the V word, okay? <laughs> I prefer romantically challenged. When I'm asking your opinion, but you are Never thought I'd get involved with a younger guy. And I want you the to things he does to me. Just be careful, dude. Someone else might be. Ah! This is Josh, my um, ex husband. And this is Han, my uh, roommate. You just can't quit him, can you? Give me a minute to collect myself. You two have a family. I'm on the outside looking in. He's barely out of college, and I'm a walking midlife crisis. I didn't know divorce was gonna be so... F I never wanna, wanna lose this feeling. My life is such a train wreck. It's all about love. You pushed me away only to protect myself. Yeah, that's a little too kinky. There was an orgy and you didn't invite me? Welcome back, everyone. That was the trailer to All Kinds of Love, available next week on Video On Demand and digital release. David Lewis, Matthew, and Steve, welcome to the show. How are you guys doing today? Thank you. Doing great. Great. Thank you. I appreciate you so much coming in. It's early on a Saturday for you guys. I've already had my breakfast and three cups of coffee, so I'm doing good. I'll try not to talk too fast for you. <laughs> David, I absolutely loved Rock Haven and Longhorns was so much fun. And now I really want to see Redwoods with Matthew. You have just been killing it in these films. Congratulations on this new film, sir. Thank you very much, Scott. I really appreciate your kind words and support. Well, I absolutely love getting a sneak peek from it. And uh, Matthew, you've been one of the producers on this film. Um, you also produced, I'm a huge Christmas movie nerd. So both you and C worked on Make the Yuletide Gay. So I'm excited for Christmas movies next month. So I'm excited to have all you guys on board. I've been fans for quite a while. Let's get into this movie though. David, tell me about, it has such a fresh and heartfelt story. What inspired you to write the film? You know, it all started out with the premise of like, of someone getting divorced on, you know, marriage equality. I mean, when marriage became legal, I thought that's a funny premise, but as the story developed, I thought it became something much deeper and, and still funny that um, would mean something to people. And um, and that's kind of how it started, but like, I don't know if there's ever been a project where the characters just kept getting, I just kept getting more and more attached to these characters and, and the actors really brought them to life. And that's, um, it's one of the magic things where things just came together, I think. And, uh, we, we think we've made something that, um, is funny, but, but meaningful too. 
Agreed. And and all those things are so relevant today, all these different, I mean, everyone's so interested in what we do in the bedroom, and we don't know half the time, right, between our throuples and stuff. We're still figuring <laughs> it out as gay men going along here. Uh, Matthew and Steve, talk to me. This film balances comedy and romance beautifully. How was it to kind of see those items blended so great in the script? How was the script when you guys first saw it? Oh, I was really taken by by the script because of that sort of that combination between those two elements. You know, it's very, it's very heartfelt and very sweet, but also very funny. And, um, but I think tackles some very real issues, you know, in relationships that we all sort of deal with. And um, yeah, I, I, I was very taken by the script when David first approached me with it. Matt or Steve, how was it for you? Oh, I loved the script right from the beginning. Uh, you know, Matthew was attached to it from the very beginning of the idea of the project. So I knew that, uh, that David and Matthew were talking about this project. Um, and then when I read the script, I was like, oh, this is wonderful. And then uh, and then David brought me on to cast it. And so I became the casting director of it. And then I got really deeper into it and just peeling off the layers of the story, I fell in love with the characters as well. Well, we got to talk about the casting, David. I was talking to Steve off air. I just thought everyone's role was played so beautifully. Um, when he brought these characters to you, how involved were you? Was it like hit off the park first time? Do you guys go back and forth on anybody? Talk about the casting from your perspective. David. Well, you know, like um, I, I learned early on in my career that, um, you know, the best directing equals casting. And so Steve was so invaluable. Like, um, you know, we, um, I think there was, um, you know, a couple uh, tough casting decisions we made because we had some really good people who were really, really different and brought different things to um, the role, um, uh, particularly in the character of, Trey and um, and Steve kind of guided me, you know, because I never thought about, um, you know, originally the character wasn't even trans, and you know, and Steve, and you know, and like we met this guy in casting, uh, Marvel Rex, and and then we just went in a direction where I did actually even change the script. It to incorporate so well. we got Cody joining us. Um, I'm a trans Cody character in the conversation, David. Give me one second. Okay. Here. Okay. Cody, welcome. How are you, sir? I am excited. <laughs> We've been just starting our conversation with David and Matthew and Steve here. Such a great job on the film, my friend. Congratulations. Thank you so much. And sorry, I'm like they said EST time. But I guess it was ET time. <laughs> I was telling the boys, time zone math has never been my forte. I've been doing this nine years and I mess yeah. it up all the time. So you are. I always like double and triple check it. And EST <laughs> time is like 11 a.m. right now. So I'm like straight out of bed. So here. <laughs> we are good to go. And David was just talking to us about the casting process. I mean, you have veterans and Matthew and Steve. Cody's relatively new. Talk and continue what you were saying about the casting, David. Yes, it was just, you know, like Steve and I worked, you know, like, um, I mean, he was just really um, could steer me away from bad choices. Um, he did, did what a good casting director does. Um, and, you know, like, and Steve was like intimately involved with the script from an early point and was giving me notes and had a really good idea of who these characters were. And I think that really made a difference in the casting process because he just like, um, and I remember like he, he whipped up some character descriptions, like real fast, you know, like I go, they were just so spot on. I mean, you know, like, and I even gained insights from, you know, his character descriptions. So uh, casting is really, really important. Um, and so that's, I, I just can't speak it highly enough of the job he did. Oh, thank you, David. Fantastic. Everyone played their part so well. And then another thing we talk a bit off air on, 
I thought the music just was absolutely perfect for each and every scene. I mean, you guys don't know what music he's choosing ahead of time. Cody, what was it like watching the finished product and seeing and listening to the music and how it kind of transitioned each of these scenes so beautifully? Yeah, getting the full experience. Yeah, I didn't know what any of the music was. So like I was pleasantly surprised and it added so much to the film. And I don't know who was in charge of picking all the music, but they did a good job. It was so good. I'm a huge fan of Fab the Duo. I recognize them immediately. Yeah. I had Greg and Brendan on the show a couple times. They are amazing. Uh, Matthew, Steve, what did you see when you saw the finished product and the way this music kind of transitioned through the scenes? Yeah, I think like for me, it definitely added sort of another layer emotionally to all of the scenes um, and just sort of gave, I think it just gave all of the scenes a lot more weight and sort of depth. And uh, yeah, and so the music was sort of a really kind of, you know, pleasant surprise, I guess, sort of watching it all kind of come together. And, and I'm a huge fan of music to begin with. And so for me, it really just enhances the whole experience overall. And David, like I said, I've been such a fan of all of your movies. Talk about this process of bringing this group together. You have casting from Steve. You have a music director. You have all this. Uh, is this one of your dream teams, or do you, you get pretty much like this on all of your uh, films? No, they're all different, and this was certainly a dream team. You know, like, um, and I think it shows on the screen. I think there's just... Um, um, there's just these intangibles that like, I, it's, you can't direct it. It's just like came together. And I, I just think, um, you know, and Matt and I have, um, worked together before. Right. I mean, you know, we worked together on Redwoods. And so I definitely consider him a muse who understands my quirky sense of writing and, um, can relate. I, I I mean, like, sometimes if I'm trying to explain something, I don't even have to explain it. He just gets it, you know, like, and Steve, I had met, but like, you know, and then we really got to know each other as well and have really had um, an incredible bond we developed as well, which was really special. And then, and then Cody and I developed a bond and, mm -hmm. like, and still talk, you know, like, and so, um, and you never know, I'd love to say, oh, you can just, it's going to work out every time, you know, like, but anyone would be lying if they said it's just going to magically work out every time. And like, but, you know, people just came in and, you know, it humbled me how much everyone really cared about this. I mean, and really brought their best selves to this project. And so as a director, that's really humble, you know, because like they treat it as their own. They just like they came in and they they just on every level uh, brought their best selves. I'll always appreciate that. I can't agree more. And Matthew, I mean, you've had a very prolific career in LGBTQ films. How does this compare to some of your previous projects? You had a very grounded, emotional arc. How were you able to connect with this character? Well, um, I think like for me, it was really about connecting with the character. He's a, he's a little bit different from me, but I think connecting with the character wasn't so much. I had just come back from a big break from acting. I really hadn't acted in a while. I had been more behind the camera. So this was sort of like a um, kind of a, a, an experience of sort of revisiting this passion that I've had, you know, of, of, you know, in acting and, and exploring characters for a really long time. And so it was really just a really special experience to get to explore this character, find the, you know, the facets of him that were similar to me and also the ones that were different from me and, and sort of combine those two things. It was, it was, a uh, yeah, it was just a really um, fulfilling experience for me. It was very fulfilling done so well and cody this is one you're newer to the business than matthew and steve and your character brings such youthful energy to the movie but you also have some deeper emotional moments how is that combining those kind of acting skills together for this character yeah since i read the script like i was 
in love with the character and felt really connected to him. And work, working with David was a dream. So like he really helped me like get find Conrad. And I was pretty similar to Con Conrad in a lot of ways, but David really helped me and Matthew. Like we just like all work together to bring it to life. And I had so much fun with all the fun parts of the script and emotional parts. It was just a blast. So well done. As the kids say this these days, what it was dank? I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out here, but uh, I'm kind of going. Steve, talk about this compared to your part. You have such a prolific career yourself. Talk about any specific moments from filming where you felt the story really came to life for you or just the collaboration working with David and your husband and everything. Yeah, well, it was it was so great. So, uh, you know, we were in the midst of casting when David asked if I wanted to play Josh. We were already casting Josh and looking at other actors for that part. And so then I was so excited because it was a character that I was really interested in because a lot of the actors who were uh, looking at that character looked at him as like the villain. And I always thought of the character as like, they just weren't right for each other, uh, you know, Max and Josh. And that, that doesn't make either one the villain. And so um, getting to play that, but then playing ex-husbands with your real life husband was very, <laughs> very interesting. And, uh, but yeah, I just, I just love the, the cast that we brought together. I love the characters. I love the writing. You know, Matthew was attached from the beginning. So when David and I met about casting, we started with Conrad and said, we already know that Matthew is a fantastic actor. So Conrad has to be good too. We can't have somebody who's not going to match him scene to scene. And so that role was cast, you know, months before anybody else. We had to lay the groundwork of we had our Conrad and we, of course, had our Max. And then once we found Cody, it was like, oh, done. These guys <laughs> took it off from the beginning. And then putting them together for the first in-person audition, because we started on Zoom, um, they just nailed it from the beginning. And Cody walked out and David and I looked and we're like, okay, that's our Conrad. It was pretty easy. <laughs> I absolutely love that. And David, from a writing and directing standpoint, you have these three powerful people in there, plus all your supporting cast. I mean, Matthew's mom and dad were amazing. Were there any memorable or unexpected moments on the set that kind of shifted your vision from the film, from the original at all? Um, you know, like, it was, I think the main thing that... Um, I always set out to make something that was meaningful, you know, like that had depth, but I think I was still even surprised as we were filming how much depth there was. And they were bring, you know, like, because like, cause there's a lot of zaniness going on here and throuples, and, <laughs> you know, kind of some, some crazy situations and stuff like this. But like, but I said, this is, um, you know, like, um, I always thought there was some poignancy in it, but like, but it really dawned on me in filming. Like, I go, oh, th there's there's a lot of poignancy here. There's, there's a lot, um, and so that was um, a fun thing going into post. Going, um, oh, um, we, um, you know, it's hard to describe, but that was probably the biggest um, surprise I had. It's not a huge surprise, but it was a surprise. Right. No, great answer. And, and Matthew, back to you. I mean, how do you feel you've been, like you said, you've been behind the camera now for a while. You've acted throughout your life here. How do you feel this film kind of fits into the larger landscape of LGBTQ cinema today? I just think I love going back. This Harkins love story is always fun. Everything has to be gritty these days, it seems. But talk about how you see this film kind of fitting into the LGBTQ landscape of cinema today. I mean, I think it's a movie for me, it's 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 I think what's special about it and how it fits is that it's a movie about trying to find love and unexpected, you know, finding love in unexpected places and being open to that experience and being open to maybe exploring something that may seem foreign to you. And I, I for me, it's 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 about it's I think it encompasses all of that. And so that's when to, and I I feel that that's all relevant. Those are all relevant conversations that that people are are having about relationships today so that's that's sort of where i feel it fits i love that and cody being one of the newer experiences for you is there anything 
that you've got any advice you've had kind of going into this that really helped shape your performance or anything you got from these three that kind of helped you in your acting in the future? I think they just all made me feel like so welcome and assured me that I was their Conrad and they, yeah, just helped me like the whole way. And we had rehearsals, which was really nice. And we just got to like bond and just feel comfortable with each other. And that really helped me like as a first lead role that they were just holding my hand the whole way. And yeah, we just had like a nice bond together. That's amazing. Rehearsals, you don't hear of that often. Especially I know. In, in, yeah, it was nice. <laughs> in independent LGBTQ films, it's a little difficult. David, <laughs> talk about what you're hoping the audience has got out of this film. What was, I mean, there's so many different great aspects to it. What are you hoping the audience walks away with? I hope they walk away um, with a smile on their face and they feel good. I mean, that's the ultimately, you know, when you can that there's some laughs along the way, but I think, um, and that like, I think people can look at this, that love takes all kinds of different forms and comes in unexpected places and times. And so, but really we wanted, um, yeah, I, I just want people to, in, in this day and age when there's so much stuff going on, if we can put a smile on people's face and make them laugh and, and think a little, um, that I feel that's mission accomplished. Yep. Well said. And Matthew, does this kind of put the bug back in you to continue acting again? I mean, you get to act against your handsome hubby over there next to you. Do you guys have any projects you'd like to do together again? Yeah, I definitely, I mean, I, I don't think I'll ever stop acting, you know, completely. I think it'll always be a part of my life and a part of my journey. But um, yeah, I have stories that I want to tell and scripts that I'm working on that I've been writing. And, and Steve has been a huge help with me in terms of story. And I do have plans of, you know, working on another film that he's involved in um, as an actor. And so that would be, you know, that would be a really great uh, journey to go on again. But yeah, for, for me right now, I think um, just being involved creatively in anything is like, you know, it's a, a, a welcome invitation. I love that. And Steve, I mean, you've been doing this as long as well and just fantastic roles you've chosen, but hitting it out of the park on this casting and all the behind the scenes stuff you've produced a lot in your past as well. Do you see a, a mix coming of wanting to be more behind the screens? Or are you still enjoying the acting process as well? I definitely enjoy the the acting more than anything, but uh, just being on set, doing anything with producing, casting, anything. I just like to be a part of uh, of the industry, and but yeah, acting's my my number one love. I love that. And Cody, talk about your expectations. I mean, you, you've come into this on a pretty well-established hit film with some excellent actors and directors. Uh, nowhere to go but up here for you. Tell me about your. Uh, your visions for your future. What are you hoping to, to uh, get in the future for your acting career? Do you see yourself going behind the camera ever? Well, David kind of inspired me to start writing my own scripts. So he really helped me write this one script, gave me some good advice on it called Out on Top. Um, and I have a couple production companies interested in that one. And then I've written another script called In the Beat of a Heart, um, that I'm still working on and, and I'm also like writing a play. So like I, David kind of really got me interested, like in screenwriting more and kind of Matthew, cause Matthew writes screenplays too, and is a USC screenwriting professor. So I've started to really enjoy writing as well as acting, which has been fun and like writing roles that I would like to play amazing and you have some great mentors that are helping you out i mean yeah. that's the business anymore especially after the strike and everything there's not a lot of product coming out there from writers if you don't write your own stuff anymore it's very difficult i remember i started the show about the same time the film was set back the week after marriage equality is my very first episode of the podcast where i had a couple of the plaintiffs from there and it's changed so much back then it was all um 
web series and everything because the same thing you weren't getting good roles so people were writing for themselves and doing the whole package do you see the film industry hopefully coming back more david and kind of doing bigger projects like these i hope so i hope so you know like um it's a you know and i don't have to tell you it's just an ever-changing landscape and so um i think it's still being sorted out but like but at the end of the day, you know, like, I just view it as like, good writing is good writing. And if you come up with a good story, um, I, I guess I'm a half glass full kind of person that somehow it'll make its way uh, to the screen. And I've seen Cody's writing. He's a natural writer. I mean, it's, um, and I've worked with writers all my life. And so I know a natural writer when I see one. And, and Matt is too. You know, so like, um, and I do think acting and writing have always been close cousins. And so like, um, and so I think um, all of these guys you're talking to have a huge potential to just keep blossoming in their careers. I agree 100%. Well, Steve, Matthew, David, and Cody, it's an absolute pleasure talking on the Left of Straight show today. We have to have you all back individually and talk about your careers. The movie's called All Kinds of Love. It's available on video on demand and all digital platforms October 1st next week. Guys, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Oh, thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so we much. Have time for a little five questions with these guys so look for that next week we appreciate you so much tune in to every left of straight show interviews we'll have hope you have a fantastic week and we'll see you next time bye-bye